can see all of you. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Yeah, I'm good. Doing good. Thank you, Christine. Good. Great, great. Can you guys turn your cameras on, everyone? I can. I know some of you. Hi, Reed. Hi. Great, Shazan, Tyler, Kabi, Shantel, Arya. Can you guys? Can I request you guys to turn your cameras on? Miss my camera. Tyler's camera is not working. Chantal, for you, same as well. Yeah, sorry, Don't say that. <laughs> Kabir, Shazan, Arya, what about you guys? Okay, okay, no problem. All right, not a problem. So, for the ones who know me, they know me that I'm Christine, and the ones who do not know me, let me tell you. Let me introduce myself. I'm Christine, I'm a biology teacher and today I'm here to give you a, a like live session on biology. We will be discussing paper 2. But first thing first, if you don't know about the Gelecta, Gelecta is an online organization which provides face-to-face -face and online or classes. We, we uh, take classes for 11 plus, for GCSEs, for A-levels, KS2, KS3 and we cover all the both and subjects. Right? I want to, of course, you are allowed to mute, unmute yourself at this point but in, like please when you want to say something you can also stay active with me via the chat box okay all right now i welcome you all to our biology class today we will be discussing about paper two which includes our last three units <coughs> which includes our last three units which is homeostasis and response inheritance variation and evolution ecology and we will be discussing some questions also like how do you approach those questions how do you answer the questions how should you answer the questions so that you don't lose marks right many a times you know the concept but you do not know how to write it so you lose marks as well right i would suggest all of you to just be actively engaged with me you take your pen and paper with you also be ready with a mobile phone to take picture or screenshots because i have certain mind maps or flow charts that's gonna help you to revise the topics you can always take screenshots for those topics that's gonna help you later on to revise right and please be really really active of course it's three units so we're gonna have a summary of all three units and how are they going to help you we are available on all the different platforms so make sure you are a uh, like connected to us via different platforms specifically facebook and telegram because on telegrams we always provide month weekly uh worksheets that are going to help you a lot to practice questions right hi sufyan hi simona they are connected to the audio first unit that we have is homeo homeostasis and response now you guys can quickly tell me in the chat box like what exactly is homeostasis what do you think what is homeostasis you can tell me in the chat box that's great abdul great so you wanna enjoy a lot that unit today right homeostasis and response can anyone of you people tell me in the chat box what do you think what do we mean by term homeostasis <coughs> correct correct may i know your name in the chat box you read please in the chat box and may i know your name please i cannot see your name changes in the body are you sure regulation of temperature you mean that makes sense perfect you know what happens let's say your body temperature or body sugar levels or body's water content do you think that your body's internal environment do you think what your body's internal environment needs to stay constant so that you can survive do you think so if i change something inside your body that would affect your health yes or no so inside your body very good tyler good job basically in your in your internal condition should be regulated in a perfect way in a balanced way no, not too much not too low this process where you regulate your internal environment that is homeostasis right which includes two major things in this unit we first have to discuss about the nervous system nervous system and then we have to discuss about the endocrine system. Correct, Yashvin. Very good. First, we talk about the endocrine. Next, second, second, we talk about the endocrine system. Till then, the ones who knows, you can tell me what do we mean by, like, what are discussed in the nervous system and what is included in the endocrine system. You can tell me there. Hi, Sufyan, Simona, Muhammad. How are you guys? If possible, please turn your cameras on. I, as you, the ones who know me, they know how much I love to see, like, face of my students. So, it would be great if you guys can turn your cameras on. Correct. Very good. I can see. I can't. You are writing all the correct answers, but I don't know your name. 
If there is no name on your screen, can you tell me your name? It's thyroid pituitary master gland. Pituitary is the master gland. Correct. Very good. Correct. Shaza. Neurons. Very good. Let's talk about it. The first thing first. In your nervous system, you know, there are actually two types of nervous. It is a classification of it. Central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Central means which is at the center of your body controlling everything. What is that? It includes two parts. Your brain and the spinal cord. Basically, there is your brain. And a spinal cord coming out of it. This is your central nervous system, which controls everything going in your body. Peripheral nervous system, which includes all the nerves around your body. Does it make sense? Nerves around your body. Central nervous system controls the system. Peripheral nervous system is the one by which we communicate all around the body. Right? <coughs> Correct. Now, in the nerves, when I say nerves, nerves are actually, you know, let me tell you, nerve is nothing but a tissue. Now, you know, tissue is something which is made up of group of cells, right? This tissue is made up of lots of nerve cells. Nerve cell or you can say neuron. Neuron is the nerve cell. Neuron is a cell. All these bundles of neurons makes a nerve. Does it make sense? Bundles of neuron cells makes the nerves. We need to know the structure of neuron cells. There are lots of branching at the beginning, which is called as dendrites. There is a cell body, then axon, and then a tail at the end, which is also have lots of branching. Dendrites is something which receives the information. Like say you touch something hot, there is a neuron in your skin, right? It receives that hot, hot sensation via the dendrites. They, they send something, they pass it on to the nucleus, nuclear, nucleus processes it. Send it forward and send it to the exon terminal. From this, it will send this information to the next neuron. Does it make sense? Neuron to neuron to neuron. Let's say if I touch something hot, there is a neuron. We will pass it on to the another neuron, then another neuron, then another neuron and so on. So, information is passed from neuron to neuron. The information travels in, within a neuron in the form of electrical impulses. Information travels within a neuron in the form of electrical impulses. It's like electrical current, right? And at the covering of the exon, there is the yellow thing that you see called the myelin sheet. It's like a... Yep, that's correct. So, this myelin sheet is like a covering, protective covering of the exon because there is electrical current, right? Electrical impulses. Sometimes it is fast, rapid. So, myelin sheet actually protects the neuron or the exon from that electrical impulse, right? Insul it acts as an insulator. Correct. Very good. Right? Now, these neuron cells are of three types. Sensory neuron, motor neuron and interneuron. Interneuron also called as relay neuron. Sensory basically that sends something. Sensory neuron, yes, Kabir. Sensory basically, sensory basically which sends things, right? It is going to receive the information. Pass it on to the next neuron. Relay neuron means how in relay race we pass the, the, we pass the relay to a person and then he runs, right? Similarly, what happens is there is a sensory neuron. Take the information to the brain. In the brain, there is an interconnecting neuron called the relay neuron. Take the information from sensory. Pass it on to the motor. Does it make sense? In the central nervous system, you have the relay neurons. Basically, they take the information from the sensory, pass it on to the motor. Motor neurons are the ones which are linked to your muscle cells, which cause the impact or cause the effect, right? Next, we have the synapse. Basically, synapse is nothing but the gap between two neurons. That's your synapse. Synapse is nothing but the gap between two neurons. <coughs> so, one neuron has this electrical... One neuron have this electrical impulse coming out of it. At the end of it, is it, it is converted into chemicals. From one neuron to another neuron, information is passed through the chemicals. Information is passed through the chemicals. And then another neuron again have electrical transmission. Like that. Synapse is nothing but the space between two neurons. Synapse is nothing but, but space between two neurons. Space between two neurons. Moving on to the next thing, which is reflex actions. You guys also know about it. When you touch something really hot and you pull your hand back, right? Really suddenly, very fast. That is a reflex action. You don't think about it. Reflex actions are very rapid in nature. They are automatic actions. They are rapid in nature. How are they caused? Again, you touch something hot. Let's say this is your stimulus. 
stimulus your if sensory neuron are going to <coughs> are going to sense this take this information from the hand yes yeah, sure definitely you can take a screenshot these ones abdul all right quickly take a screenshot let me know when you're done you guys can take screenshots whenever you want so as i said <coughs> information is taken from the stimulus via the sensory neuron from the sensory neuron it goes to the muscles again to the central nervous system there is a relay neuron which passes information to the motor neuron motor neuron takes information to the muscle cells cause the impact or cause the effect that's how reflex action works in your past year papers there has been question based on it for example what is meant by the term reflex actions so reflex actions are the reflex actions are the actions that are automatic and rapid to ensure that there is no to minimize the damage of your to your body right that's what we mean by reflex actions there has been a six mark question in your past year papers a woman's hand accidentally touch a hot object the woman moves her hand away rapidly you have to describe how women's nervous system coordinate this reflex action so you have to talk about there is always a stimulus you can write in the chat box if you know there is always a stimulus from the stimulus there is going to be a receptor maybe your skin which has sensory neuron from the receptor this information goes to your central nervous system which is a spinal cord in your reflex action spinal cord is involved brain is not involved this is very important brain do not take any action in the during the reflex action brain only catches the information stores the information that okay this happened you remember it but brain do not control the action spinal cord is the one which controls the action so in your central nervous system it is the spinal cord information reaches the spinal cord from the spinal cord of course it reaches the effector organ that is your muscle cells and muscle cells contract and muscle cells contract is muscle cells contract and then they cause the response right yes or no the effector cause the response you have to explain all these points in your six mark answer does it make sense you have to, I, you have to talk about the neurons involved in this you have to to talk about the neurons involved in this that there is sensory neuron which take this information to the uh, spinal cord in the spinal cord there is relay neuron which pass the information to the motor neuron motor neuron take the information to the effector you have to talk about the pathway you have to talk about the spinal cord that brain is not involved you have to talk about the three types of neurons involved in this this is how you approach these type of questions right moving on is does anyone has any confusion by far if you have any questions you can always ask me in the chat box <laughs> next we have the brain in the brain what is important brain there are three things that we need to know different parts of the brain function of each part of the brain location of each part of the brain there are majorly one cerebral two cerebellum three medulla and four hypothalamus these four parts are very important in brain and their location and function cerebral is this outermost part of the brain this you think this uh, this folded thing yellow bit outermost this is your cerebral what does it do it actually controls your consciousness let's say if i ask a question so you are understanding it and you answer me that's your cerebral answering it memory cerebral that your intelligence your language everything is controlled by the cerebral the outermost part of your brain at the bottom side do you see this leaf like structure there you see this leaf like structure there this is your cerebellum which is responsible for your coordination and movement for the balancing of your body when you walk when you cycle right when you ride a bike all these things require balancing which is controlled by the cerebellum spinal cord which is a part of central nervous system coming out of it as you can see there is medulla which controls the unconscious activities of your body for example when you breathe does it does it have ever happen that okay i forgot to breathe or i forgot to pump like or beat or my heart forgot to be beat that never happens right you don't have to think about it unconsciously they, they are taking place in your body controlled by the medulla all right pituitary gland which is of course also a master gland because it controls different glands in your body then there is hypothalamus hypothalamus is mainly responsible for the temperature regulation in your body also it controls other glands as well 
temperature regulation is one of the key function of hypothalamus that we will also discuss how does uh, hypothalamus actually regulates the temperature if you guys want you can always take screenshot for this slide and just show me a thumbs up and once you are done i will move on to the next slide like yeah can i not <coughs> No, dear. It's a live session, so we have to cover a lot. Can you take a screenshot of the picture? Yeah. Because we have to cover a lot of things, right? Perfect. Are you guys done, everyone? Do we understand it? Please show me a thumbs up if we understand it. Arya, Shantel, Kabir, Tyler, Shazan, and Geeta, Sara, Harris, Mohammed, Simona. All right, great. Show me a thumbs up if we understand it. And if you have any questions, you can al always ask me in the chat box. Perfect. Moving on to the next that we have the eye. See, in the nervous system, we have the brain. We discussed that. We have the nerves. We discussed that neuron cells. We had the uh, spinal cord. So, spinal cord is involved in the reflex action. We discussed that. Next, in the nervous system, we also have to discuss about the structure of eye. Your eyeball, right? This is how, see, you only see this bit from the eye, from the front that I can see. At the back, it's a big eyeball, right? that you can't see inside the socket. There's a big eyeball. Now, what are different pa <coughs> parts of it? First of all, there is a lens in between. As you can see here, there is a lens. Whatever light falls in your eye falls on this lens. Lens make it focus. Let's, lens make it focus at a point at the back of your eye, which is called as retina. All the light rays focus at this point at the back of your eye which is called as retina. Retina is something that have all the different receptors to receive the light and create an image. Does it make sense? Retina. If your image is not focusing on the retina, if all these lights are not focused on the retina, then we have an eye defect. Right? Either that maybe let's say in some cases the eye is focused, uh, the, all the light is focusing in front of retina. That's a defect. If the eye's lens is focusing it behind the retina, that's a defect. The light, we can only see clearly if the light is falling or focusing on the retina. Does it make sense? Perfect. Next we have the, yes, that's why you have glasses. That's why I have glasses. Because my eye lens is not able to focus the light on my retina. That's why I have to wear glasses. So when I wear glasses, what happens is it make, it bends the line in certain way. That again makes the lens makes it possible for the lens to focus the light on retina. Makes sense? Glasses helps the lens to focus the light on retina. Then we have ciliary muscles, which helps in the adjustment of the thickness or th thinness of uh, light. Yes. Then there is cornea, which is a transparent layer outside your eye. Transparent layer outside your eye, which controls, like you know, controls the law. Uh, you can say which bends the light also. We also need to know the function of different parts of eye. Let's say cornea, as I said, which reflects the light bend as it enters the eye. It is a transparent layer there. We have the iris. You know how different people have different colored eye? No, it's not the eyelid. Eyelid is something, oils. It's outside the eye. Cornea is a transparent layer. Why? You can't see it. You can just feel it. This transparent layer, out, just outermost layer. You see this outermost layer? In your eye, this is the outermost layer, which is transparent. You can't, you can just feel, you can just transfer it. So you can't feel it, right? It's there. Iris is something like, see how different people have different colored eye? They have blue eyes. They have brown eyes. They have green eyes. So it is the iris actually, the colored part of your eye. That is the iris. This is your iris, which, which actually surrounds the pupil or the lens of the eye. Iris, different color for different people. This decides how much light enters inside the pupil. pupil. There is lens, there is retina, which con contains all the light receptors, receive the light. Optic nerve is there. Whatever image is formed at the back of your retina. See, you see me, the image of, the image of me formed at the back of your retina. But how do you know it's me, Christine? Because your optic nerves from the eye take this image information to your brain. Your cerebrum, cerebrum remembers it. That okay, this is Christine. Does it make sense? Optic nerve are the ones which are taking this information to the brain. You can take screenshots and I'm moving on. <coughs> then how does the body actually controls the body temperature? Let's say 
it's a blind spot abdul it's a blind spot let's say if your light focuses on the phobia you won't be able to see anything that's how like you know that happens with in some of the blind people cases the light focuses at the phobia so if the light they, they, they do not have any light receptors right now how does the hypothalamus actually controls your body temperature if your body temperature goes up let's say you exercised a lot right your body temperature goes up so your hypothalamus will respond in three ways first it will dilate your blood vessels basically dilate your blood vessels so that it, there is no much pressure this like open dilated blood vessels okay i'll give you the time it's okay you can take one then dilating blood vessels that allow the heat to be lost to the environment so that the heat that you have inside your body because of high temperature that is lost second sweat glands produces the sweat that sweat also allows you to cool down and the hair lie flat against the skin basically it allows the it does not allow any air to trap the heat allows heat to be lost to the surrounding exactly the opposite of that happened when temperature decreases in your body uh, your blood vessels will be constricting heat will be conserved constricting blood vessels it will not allow the heat to be lost to the environment it will conserve the heat shivering is a type of exercise you know that movement when we shiver that is the type of body's ex way of ex exercising to generate heat third is skin hairs erect how in uh, how in winter the skin the hairs erect right got erect why does why does that happen why does that happen because to trap to make you cool to make sorry to make your body trap the heat to make to increase the temperature to trap the heat in your body and because of that your body temperature comes back to the normal you can take the screenshot really quick for this flow chart if it's a six mark question like how does hypothalamus covers the uh, or controls or regulates your body temperature you have this answer you have three marks for this one what happens in the increase case three marks for this one what happens in the decrease case and you are sorted with the answer right <coughs> you can take a screenshot for this one if you haven't take this one you want me to go again with the hypothalamus regulation the temperature regulation tyler should i explain this again that's what you're saying or you're saying this you want to take a screenshot for this slide i don't get it can you please say it okay if a question is there let's say how does the hypothalamus actually controls the body temperature or regulates the body temperature if it's a six mark question so you will explain if the body temperature increases hypothalamus respond to it in so many ways hypothalamus creates these many responses in your body if the body temperature decreases hypothalamus creates these responses in your body which leads to the normal body temperature and by regulating it so it's a six mark question three mark for this one and three mark for this one that's what i said if it's a four mark question the so two mark for each a bright according to the marks if it's a four mark question two point for each would be enough right moving on as you do, as you said homeostasis means the regulation of internal conditions of a cell so that they can function optimal they have the optimum conditions for their all the functions going on in your body so that in response to the internal and external changes hormones are involved in this endocrine system there are different glands the glands which produces hormones are called as endocrine glands the erect hair traps the heat not the lying ones endocrine glands the glands which produce hormones are called as endocrine glands one of them is pituitary gland the adrenal gland which is the cap of the kidneys there is thyroid gland in your neck pancreas in your chest region somewhere like i know it is a part of digestive system also testes are there in case of males and ovaries are there in case of females right each gland is important pituitary gland is also called as the master gland because what happens is this pituitary sends signals to all the other gland to release their hormones whenever the, it is there is a need to for any gland to release hormone pituitary sends the signal to that gland because it is controlling other glands that's why it is called as master gland a thyroid gland releases thyroxine which is important in your metabolism which is which plays an important role in the metabolism of body adrenal gland releases adrenaline which is important for the flight and fight response <coughs> i 
I'll explain. Don't worry. Flight or fight response. They become activated. Testers, which is responsible, which is which produces which produces testosterone responses responsible for all the secondary sexual characteristics in case of males insulin is important for the glucose regulation in your body blood glucose level glucose level in your body is regulated by the insulin again obvious for the female sexual secondary sexual characteristics and the reproduction now your question abdul says how does hair lying down there is less space for heat to escape what happens is Let's say this is my skin, and hair are like erect, like that. If they are erected, right? When they got erect, air mol air particles trap between the hairs when they are erect. These air part molecules actually act as insulator. Do not allow the heat to escape easily, right? Air that traps between the hairs, they act as insulators, which do not allow the heat to be lost to the environment. Make sense? Next, we have the temperature, the sugar blood glucose regulation in our body, which is a part of home homeostasis. How does that happen? Whenever the blood glucose level goes high, there is insulin in your body. Your body will produce, the pancreas will produce insulin. Insulin works in two ways. Sure. For this one or the last one, Tyler? You can always take screenshot. You don't have to ask me. Just let me know if you want me to go back to any slide. Pancreas are there, which stimulates the insulin. Again, which, which releases the insulin. Insulin works in two ways. A, it takes all your body cells, specifically muscle cells. Okay, I have lots of glucose in my blood. Just take it. <coughs> if uh, glucose, if you, you know, there's lots of glucose in the blood, please take it. So the body cells take the glucose from the blood. Insulin also has the liver cells. There is lots of glucose in the blood. Please take it. So liver also take up the glucose. Liver actually convert this glucose into glycogen. Glycogen is like stored form of glucose. Right? Glycogen, stored form of glucose. Glucose is stored in the animal cells in, in form of glycogen. Both of them, because they absorb the glucose from the blood. So the blood glucose level goes down, which brings down the glucose level to the normal. When the body sugar level goes low, Pancreas releases another hormone called glucagon. This works in the opposite way. See how liver was storing the glycogen. Liver will actually convert the glycogen back to the glucose, release it into the glucose, give it back to the blood. So the blood glucose level goes up and come back to the normal. You guys can take screenshot of this slide. Let me know when you're done. I'll move on. Not exactly, Abdul. That's a physical question now, to be honest. But yeah, no, they, uh, air particles actually get trapped which do, because they are getting the space there, right? They do not allow the heat to actually escape out. I'm not saying that they, try, they keep all the heat. That's not the case. They reduce it. Does it make sense? They reduce at which they are... What if it's normal? If it's normal, the pancreas will neither release insulin nor glucagon. Pancreas will not release that hormone because the blood glucose level is normal, right? It will not release anything. Next, we have the hormones which are involved in the human reproduction, specifically in case of females. Four hormones are there which are involved in the female uh, reproduction cycle. Follicle stimulating hormone, estrogen, <coughs> Luteinizing hormone and progesterone. They are produced by different glands in your body. Follicle stimulating hormone produced by pituitary, estrogen by ovaries, LH by pituitary gland again, and progesterone by ovaries. So two hormones by ovaries, two hormones by pituitary gland. They all have their different roles, which is important at their in you know in their own terms. You need to know the role of each hormone and when are they active. Follicle stimulating hormone causes the egg to mature in the ovary. And it stimulates the ovary to release estrogen. Two functions. Estrogen, because there, because when enough of estrogen is there, it stops this FSS to be produced. Stops FHS production, maintain the uterus lining and stimulates the pituitary to release LH now. So they are going in turn. They stimulate each other to be, you know, they stimulate the other gland to release the other hormone. Then LH will actually trigger ovulation. Ovulation means release of egg. Remember how in female reproductive system, egg is formed inside the ovaries. This egg has to be released. 
Yes, it is a chemical. Hormones are chemical messengers. The triggers ovulation. It causes the release of uh, egg from the ovary. Progesterone release again produced by the ovaries. It maintains the lining of the uterus again. How does it work? Please pay attention. If you pay attention, you will see there. Like how does it work? Premenstrual. Menstrual cycle means the bleeding period. When the when there is bleeding takes place in the females every month. Right? Why does that happen? What happens is, let me tell you in brief. Egg is produced in the ovaries. Egg is released from the ovaries, which is a gamete. Sperm enters the uh, enters the uterus. There is fertilization takes place. Baby grows in the uterus. Right? But that is that leads to pregnancy. If that does not happen, if sperm does not enter the female reproductive system, this egg will be released from the ovary. It will reach here. The thick uterus lining got thickened. Why it got thickened? Support the baby, right? Just in case baby got implanted. But if that does not happen, this egg here because of course the lining was thick. There is no fertilization, no sperm, so egg is useless. Lining is useless. So what happens is this egg and the lining got to shed down. The lining sheds away, and because of course it's a blood lining, right? It has blood vessels in it. So when it sheds, blood comes out of the vagina, which is your menstrual flow, monthly menstrual cycle, right? That happens before the menstrual cycle. Your endometrium layer will go up and up, up and up. It is increasing. It is getting thicken and thicken and thicken. When menstrual menstrual come, the cycle come, bleeding takes place. The lining will get a thick thinner, right? Lining will get thinner because it is getting broken down. After that, starts to build up again for the next month. Just in case next month sperm comes and so on. This cycle repeats every month. This is menstrual cycle. I hope it is clear. Now, many a times, many a times we don't want the uh, pregnancy, right? We don't. What ovulation means again? When this ovary releases the egg from the ovary to the uterus. That's ovulation. Okay. Now, many a times we do not want the want the pregnancy, right? So there are many methods for the contraception. Contraception is nothing but to preventing methods to prevent the pregnancy. There are different methods to prevent it. There are natural methods. There are chemical methods. There are barrier methods and surgical methods. Most important are chemical barrier and surgical. Natural means when you basically abstinence when you know at the beginning of the cycle what is happening as the egg is being produced it is still not here yet so you the sperm can enter at this time when egg is not there so they they will not fertilize no pregnancy will takes place monitoring body temperature changing the cervical mucus these are not as important for GCSE what's important is the chemical contraceptive implants some chemicals are inserted in your body iud's are inserted in your body contraceptive pills oral pills these are oral pills which are taken by the body, by the person females what they cause is they make certain changes they use hormones to make certain changes in the body that does not allow the baby or the zygote to be produced right Barrier methods, which physically actually protects the, uh, uh, you can say, contact between the male and the female fluids, which includes condom <coughs> for males, femidom for females, diaphragm for females. This is all. Barrier methods are also important to prevent your STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, because it prevents the uh, physical contact of fluids, right? So, because the fluids are not contacting directly, it also prevents your STDs. Question can come up like that also. Surgical method, when you actually cut down the vasectomy, the worst difference in the case of males and female Basically, female sterilization, when you cut this OV ducts out, when you cut them out, what will happen? The egg will be produced, but it will not reach here, right? Because you have cut the tube. So, in that case, no fertilization will take place again right so they are permanent solutions surgical means almost permanent because to uh, like reverse them it's almost impossible so they're almost permanent solutions right next there's a question based on it like uh, give three ways coordination by endocrine system is different from nervous system we have discussed nervous system which involves nerves which involves electrical impulses right and different parts of are there we have discussed endocrine system which involves hormones which are chemical messengers there are different glands for it nerves the electrical impulse travels through the nerves 
hormones or the chemical messengers travel through the blood they dissolve in the blood then travel from one part to the another so that would be a homework question for you guys you guys can quickly take a screenshot you guys have to write answers for this one quickly take a screenshot then similarly next we have of course next we have the admissions you can enroll for the gcse's admissions are open we next saturday you have the nvr live i'll be there will the mock test there would be gcse english live as well for an inspector call and romeo and juliet next saturday you can join at the same time next unit we have is inheritance variation and evolution inheritance is nothing but passing on the inheritance is nothing but passing of the <coughs> same genes from the parents to the offsprings now to do that there are two sites of reproduction sexual and asexual sexual means when there is only one, two parents are involved asexual only one parent is involved types so mitosis is involved in the asexual reproduction in sexual there is meiosis involved we will discuss these two types of cell division also because there is only one parent involved so the offspring are genetically identical sexual reproduction two parents are involved so that they are genetically different only there is uh, again lots of offspring are produced in asexual some limited offspring are produced in sexual you can take a screenshot of this the differences between the sexual and the asexual reproduction moving on now next we have division two types of divisions are there as we discussed mitosis meiosis what happens in the mitosis there are four of course there is first of all interphase when i say in a cell cycle first there is interphase interphase is the phase the phase where there is replication of dna takes place now remember a typical cell have 2n that is 23 pair of chromosomes after interphase they will have four of chromosomes let's say if there are 46 chromosomes dna will be replicated after interphase there would be 92 chromosomes then mitosis takes place the cell division what happens is there are four stages the trick to remember is pmat pmat prophase metaphase anaphase telophase what happens is prophase the nuclear membrane disappears yes it is it is it is like cloning right it is a type of asexual so what happens is this is prophase the nuclear membrane disappears and the chromosomes become visible metaphase they, let me zoom it for you so that you can understand easily the nuclear the see how the chromosomes are scattered in this one they become they become replicated there is double of them Mito, metaphase when they all line up in the center of the cell can you see that in anaphase they are pulled apart to opposite poles telophase there is two sets of nucleus now after that cytokinesis takes place cytokinesis of takes place and there is two daughter cells at the end, end of mitosis you have two daughter cells because see you had 92 when they divided they pull to opposite paths this is 46 this is 46 so each cell have 46 and 46 if you see same as the original parent 46 chromosomes number of chromosomes remain same in meiosis this exact thing happens two times exact thing happens two times <laughs> let me tell you how exact thing happens two times there is pro again in, in interphase when chromosomes become visible uh, double duplicated so 92 chromosomes are there prophase one see prophase one metaphase one telophase one anaphase one pmat one time same thing happen again pmat two prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 telophase 2 in meiosis this process repeated two times okay prophase when this again they will uh, they will become <coughs> visible metaphase they line up in the at the center of the cell anaphase they are pulled apart to pulled apart to opposite poles telophase new nucleus cy uh, cytokinesis they divide into two cells at this stage they had 46 chromosomes yes or no yes or no we discuss in the mitosis what happens after that same thing happen they will divide again prophase they will go through prophase then metaphase line up in the center anaphase pulled apart telophase then telophase there will be new sets of nu uh, nucleus at the end of this you have 46 chrom sorry four cells again half of them each cell has 46 chromosomes right each of them had 46 chromosomes at this stage because they divided again each one will have 23 chromosomes meiosis is something that is important for the production of gametes because we know gametes are the one which has the half number of chromosomes right 
ट्वेंटी थ्री पेयर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम नेक्स्ट वी हैव वेरिएशन सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ वेरिएशन जेनेटिक वेरिएशन दैट मीन्स वेरिएशन मीन्स डिफरेंसेज इन दर्गेज ऑफ अ सेम स्पीशीज so there is genetic variation that means that completely depend on your genes for example differences in your blood group that completely determined by your genes right your eye color completely depend on your genes your gender your ability to roll tongue there are some other variation differences which are caused by the environment for example your scarring on a body let's say we had an accident so that will have be a scar on the body so that scar because of the environment right weight of a person how what type of diet you have language that you speak completely environmental accent that you speak that language with completely environmental however most of the variations exist not only because of genetic not only because of environment but a combination of both right you are a result of your genes as well as the environment for example your height you have the potential to grow tall but if you do not have a good diet you might not grow tall right result of both most of the variations exist because of the combination of both types of variations you can take a screenshot really quick if you want three types of variations are there now based on variation there is something that takes place called natural selection now what is natural selection basically or evolution takes place evolution is when a better suited individuals survive in a environment and they produce a new or uh, they you know they become better adapted population all along whenever it's a question of evolution please pay attention because there has been question asked in the papers in the past years whenever there is a question based on evolution you always approach a fixed uh, you always follow a fixed approach what is it let's say this is the question it says the eyes of some birds contain cells that detect ultraviolet light light uv light is reflected by some fruits and urine of small animals explain how birds that detect uv light have evolved why because you know these birds who can detect uv light can easily detect the fruits and the urine of small small mammals that means their their or you can say uh, food right so they can easily detect their food that is going to that's something that is going to give them the advantage right it's a six mark question asked in the past that's a past year question only so how do you approach this question it's a question of evolution always the same approach first there is always variation exist in the nature if it does not exist variation occurred due to mutation occurred due to chance mutation you can write due to chance mutation that's the first thing that you will write variation in a population due to chance mutation some of them can detect light other ones cannot detect light right second one the ones that can detect light are better suited to the environment so the ones who are better suited so the ones who are better suited to the environment how is going to help how it is going to be helpful for them better suited ones how is going to helpful for them they are going to survive in the nature right because they can they have good access to food the ones who do not can detect it will not survive much they will survive they will reproduce they will survive they will reproduce and pass on the genes to the next of of generation when this happens when this process repeated for multiple generations only the ones only the ones <coughs> that survive basically the good the adapted genes ones they will survive they will reproduce pass on the genes so the new population will have mostly these genes only because the ones who do not have adaptations they could not survive they could not reproduce so they die they start to die out of the population right this repeated for many generations will lead to evolution basically a pop new population that has the better suited better suited uh, genes does it make sense that leads to evolution that's how you move ahead variation leads by chance mutation better suited will survive reproduce and produce the better genes of the offspring and repeated over generation will lead to evolution right next we have is the genetic engineering or like how do we actually make you might have heard guys i must have heard of insulin shots right <coughs> the people who have diabetes take insulin shots now how do we make this insulin shot what happens is people with diabetes type 1 they cannot produce enough insulin in their body so they have to take the in insulin from the outside because you remember the blood glucose regulation insulin reduces the gl blood glucose level right they cannot produce them so they have to take it from the outside now how does that makes we take a pancreas cell which produces insulin we take the gene out of it 
we combine it with the bacterial cell bacterial plasmid gene make a new combination now bacteria is divide very rapidly bacteria is divide very rapidly so they make this they divide we allow them to grow in the fermentation tank in the laboratory which when they divide very quickly this produces the human insulin human insulin we can extract it from the bacteria or the from the tank and use it for the people right next we have the fossils now what are fossils again fossils are the remains of organisms from millions of years ago now we are found which we are found in which we are found we found them in rocks the different processes by which fossils are formed you can quickly take a screenshot of it three major processes by which fossils are formed that we need to know questions can be asked from this as well please take a screenshot i believe you guys have perfect there has been question based on sexual and asexual reproduction right like they have to complete the table so we need to know the clear we have to have, we need to have a clarity of it <coughs> gametes are formed in sexual reproduction so in the male gamete in flowering plants so the gamete in the flowering plants the male gamete is called the pollen right then there are question based on the meiosis also they, these are all past year questions so i am not like saying anything right you have whatever we are discussing has been asked multiple times in past peer papers next and the last unit that we have is our ecology ecology is pretty easy we know about it you know about the basic things like levels of organization in an ecosystem there is individual group of same individuals with the same species creates a population different population that is different species makes up a community and different communities makes up an ecosystem right yes or no remember when i am talking about ecosystem ecosystem involves both biotic that means living as well as a biotic component that means non living right so ecosystem is nothing but interaction of communities of living as well as the non living parts of environment okay as i said biotic means living which includes your plants your animals your human beings different bacteria fungi all of them right abiotic means your non living components of the ecosystem your air soil temperature light water and so on right there is question give to abiotic and biotic factors past year question four mark question right so this is pretty easy so we need to know all of these as well then we need to know about certain cycles that exist in our ecosystem one of them is the carbon cycle like of course this carbon is constantly going and cycling around in the environment what happens is when plants <coughs> first of all plants photosynthesize right they photosynthesize you take the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere using the sunlight they produce the carbohydrates which is glucose starch sugars everything when animals eat them they take this glucose from them carbon moves from plant to animals right moves from plants to animals the animals either respire they release we breathe out carbon dioxide goes carbon carbon dioxide sent back to the environment animals secrete uh, when they become dead so their body also has carbon which is dissolved in the soil soil the roots the plants takes the carbon from the soil use it sorry the carbon again from the soil used by the decomposers to release the carbon dioxide back to the air right when they release waste the fixed species also have carbon in it which is again worked by the microorganisms released back into the carbon back into the environment in the form of carbon dioxide carbon is released from the in the atmosphere from the factories also which is used from the fossils only please take a screenshot of this next we have the water cycle as we all know we have discussed this first of all there is water in the oceans in the ponds lakes everywhere water evaporates from the ocean goes into the like again like of course, this liquid water converts into water vapor via process called evaporation water vapor goes up cools down to make the clouds right that is condensation when they cool down a lot and the clouds become heavy the water the burst and the water is released which is precipitation via the precipitation <coughs> they come back to the oceans and the water bodies and they also go underground makes the underground walls water also water vapor water vapor in the uh, atmosphere also released by the plants also when they during the process of transpiration transpiration is nothing but the loss of water loss of water by the plants that is evaporation of plants also you can say 
not really, not really, kind of, but not really. Please take a screenshot of it. <coughs> now, see, there have been question asked in this, they are asking what is the process called. So, you know, water to water vapor, this is evaporation. Give two use of water in plants. So, plant use water first, again, first for the photosynthesis A for the temperature regulation also. When there is high temperature, they lost water to again to lose the heat. There has been question based on this energy efficiency also. Next, we have the biodiversity. Biodiversity means existence of variety of different species in an ecosystem, right? Which is very important. Now, what happens is because of human activities, this biodiversity is going down. They produce so many ways that waste has to be uh, sorted somewhere, right? So we have to what we can we clear the forest and to store the waste or to get rid of the waste. So that waste production takes up the space that could have that could have been taken by the plants. Deforestation again we clear out the uh, trees forest which are we are actually destroying the habitat of lots of species. We are destroying that habitat so these species becoming extinct. Global warming is there, right? Warming of earth because of the global because of the human activities that global warming also again a different species cannot survive in that high temperature that environment is changing so they become extinct now what exactly is global warming basically the warming of the earth what happens is there is there is an <coughs> sorry there is an atmosphere around us right earth has an atmosphere what happens is whatever the sunlight that we receive falls on the earth's surface, earth reflect it, but this atmosphere reflect it back. So it keeps the sun's heat, you know, within the atmosphere like that. It keeps reflected, keeps the heat coming from the sun within the environment, which is important for the earth to maintain a constant temperature to stay warm even when there is no sun. Because of this trapped heat, the parts where there is no sun at the night time, the earth is still somewhat warm. It's not too cold. Now, but what happening is, because of human activities, lots of carbon, these greenhouse gases, the gases which are present in your atmosphere, which are trapping this heat, are increasing. When these gases are increasing, more of the heat are being trapped, right? More heat being trapped means more the temperature is being stored, right? The temperature of the earth is increasing. Does it make sense? That's how global warming takes place. You can take a screenshot of this as well. <coughs> Again, there is energy levels in the ecosystem, tropic levels. You guys, you have been discussing about this in your KSC levels also. There are producers, the primary consumers, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary consumers. One thing that we need to know as we move up the tropic, uh, you know, the food chain, the energy decreases at each stage and it decreases by the 10%. That is also the 10% law. At every stage, heat or energy is lost by the 10%. If you plants get 100% heat energy from the sun, the herbivores only get the 10%. Secondary consumers only get 1%. Then the tertiary is 0.1, 0.01. At every stage, the next consumer is only receiving the 10% of the energy from the previous one. Does it make sense? Next, we have food security. Food security means having enough food to feed a population, there is no lack of food. Now again, food security nowadays is being threatened because of so many problems. One is increasing population. Population is increasing so much, so we do not have enough food to feed that much population. Environment is changing. So again, we are not able to grow as much food as possible. The growth has been affected. Lots of different pests and pathogens are being or evolved or, you know, introduced which again also destroy the food or the yields, you can say. Cost of agriculture is again expensive, specifically the modern methods of farming. And there is conflict within the countries or the, you can say, regions which do not allow the healthy or the uh, regions which have enough food to be to export it to the regions which do not have enough food, right? So some areas are actually suffering from the food security. For example, the war zones, right? The countries which are going through the wars and, and so on. Does it make sense? Now, what can be done to again <coughs> help this or to fight this? We have to choose the sustainable farming methods, which include livestock raised in small pens and cages. Now, what happens is when livestock are uh, raised in small pens and cages, what will happen? 
there they will not move a lot right they will not move a lot so they not lot of energy is lost to the environment the energy will be stored so they will have good amount or good quality of meat livestock fed antibiotics so that they don't get any disease and we can use them for the selling monoculture a single type of crops are grown at a large area that is monoculture mono means single type of crops are grown in a big yield fertilizer used to improve the quality or of, of the yield right hedge row removals is a difference there are some methods that are used sustainable farming methods one other method that we have is the role of biotechnology in it mycoprotein what is that you know there is a fungus called fusarium it is cultured in the fermenters allowed to grow this you know this fusarium this fungus is actually is a very good source it actually produces is a very good source of mycoprotein a specific type of protein this is grown in the fermenters and when it grows they the, this fungal biomass is used to produce the mycoprotein a good source of protein again it's a protein rich food so it's a suitable for vegetarians and in the minimum quantity you can have a large amount of protein which is essential for the people's growth right that again another one is production of insulin that we discussed earlier also and gm crops gm crops again what for example there is a specific grain specific grain which is not so good in quality the other one is so good in quality but this one is produces more grains but poor quality other one produces good quality grains but uh, not so much in number what you do is fertilize them both make them uh, you know make them breed the new and, and you do that until when until you got a you can say a species which has good amount of yield as well as good quality of food better crops these are the gm crops as well right does it make sense perfect so that's again <coughs> that was it for, for this session i hope everything was clear does anyone has any question any confusion now before no, we go no. i have a quick riddle for you guys are you guys ready a quick riddle let's see who can answer this riddle for me all right so the riddle says <coughs> what is something that you can hold in your left hand but not in your right hand try about try this right tell me in the chat box what is something that is uh i have asked this rashmin to you earlier yes i have <laughs> right elbow you can uh, like actually you can hold your right elbow in your left hand but you cannot hold it in your right hand right that's your right elbow that's correct perfect all right guys so that's it for this session i hope everything was clear i'll see you guys in the next session then okay till then bye bye take care have fun everyone and all the best for your gcses bye 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 arya bye ashwin Bye mom. Bye Tyler. Bye bye.